Hey everyone out there, how's it going? Welcome to Screen Speak. It is the podcast that's all about movies, life, and so much more. I'm Jordan Anderson, this is my podcast, and I'm very much appreciative of the fact that you have come around and decided to give this a listen today. Whether you're a first-time listener or existing listener, please, please go ahead and hit the follow button, download episodes of Screen Speak, share it with your friends, your family, your coworkers, anybody that you want to talk to that likes podcasts. Please, please recommend Screen Speak to them, especially if they like movies, because we like to talk about movies on here. And when I say we, it's mostly myself and guests that I have on sometimes that do it with me. But in any case, please do one or all of those things, and you'll be eternally in my in my good graces. Okay, <laughs> uh, I am here with my wife, Isola Romalo. Hello. Hello, people. She is back. She was previously on the podcast a, a good while ago, actually. We talked about King Richard, the tennis movie with Will Smith. Uh, and, and so I, I wasn't actually sure if she was going to come back on here or not. But, but this movie that we're going to talk about today, this, this seemed to inspire her to actually have some thoughts to share. So welcome back. I'm very happy to have you. Thank you. Yes, I'm back. This movie inspired me to be back, so... What Just about, like King Richard. <laughs> well, what what about this movie in, inspired you to want to talk about it? I guess that I just like real stories, movies, right? Movie about real life because movies about true events. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm discovering that about myself. I get really connected to it when it's real things, and this just like King Richard is uh, something that like give a really positive and message and a lot of teachings do you want to try and share what the story is with everybody ah no you'll do it better <laughs> <laughs> i was giving it a shot i wasn't sure if you're going to take the bait or not uh i'll i'll share the story for for those that aren't familiar with this so 13 lives that's the movie we're talking about today uh it is a true story based off real events that happened in 2018 in a province of thailand somewhere i don't know the exact one but it's in thailand it's in 2018 and it's about a this soccer team with very young players on it and their coach, uh, 13 in total, that decide for one of their birthdays after a soccer practice, or football as they call it over there, the practice they have, they decide, hey, let's go to this nearby cave on our bikes, just kind of check it out and play in there for about an hour, and then we'll go home and, and just call it a day. But what they didn't realize is that there was a bunch of rain that was going to be coming in. I, I don't know when exactly it started, but basically flash flooding started uh, shortly after they, they got into the cave. And what a lot of people don't know, and what I liked, I'm going to talk about a lot of the things I liked about this movie, but um, what they didn't realize is just how fast a cave system like the one they're in can fill up with water and mm -hmm. basically make it virtually impassable to, to get out unless you have you know, specialized equipment or, or I'd say in this case, uh, several miracles that had to come together to get this this uh, rescue to to go underway uh, but that's what this movie is about it's, it's telling the story of all the people that were involved with the rescue and goes over the, a lot of the logistics of it but I'd say most importantly it just goes over what it must have felt like I think that's what the the movie really hit on the most is that it's giving you the real feeling of what on earth it would be like to be inside these tight dark narrow corridors of a cave mm -hmm. hoping to god that you can even you know, find your way to the people, much less get them out. Uh, and it's a crazy, compelling story. It's it's done from uh, the movies directed by Ron Howard. Um, you'll know him. He's, he's directed all kinds of great movies, anywhere from Apollo 13, A Beautiful Mind, uh, uh, what else, Splash, um, trying to think, Cinderella Man. I mean, I, I could keep going. He's got a lot of great movies under his belt, and, and this is certainly no exception. So... That's essentially the setup, that's essentially the story, but talking about the real events, what did you know about it, if anything? So before the movie, Jordan came up with, like, talking about that movie. He's like, hey, do you remember that that, that happened, like, a couple years ago? And I'm like, yeah, I kind of remember. For you guys that don't know me, which is probably everybody there, uh, I am not really a person that is connected with, the world actually like I never know the news I never know what's going on but I actually knew that this had happened but I didn't know details about it I didn't know I knew that they survived I knew that somehow they got out but I didn't know like 
how how like hard it was, how important it was, how big it was at that point. And uh, so when Jordan talked about it, I was like, oh yeah, I, I'm, I like real, real things, like I said. And so I was like interested in getting to know more. First he was talking, let's talk, let's watch the documentary before the movie comes out. But, but it didn't, ended up that we didn't watch the documentary before. We watched the movie before. And then I'm like, wow, now I want to watch the documentary. Now I want to watch like everything about it. <laughs> it was just really cool. So I didn't know a lot about it. I I guess like I learned everything this weekend. <laughs> um, well, I, I mean, I certainly learned a lot about it myself. I, I think all I knew going into it from back in 2018, I knew that there was like thousands of people, potentially volunteers, military uh, service experts, uh, you know, engineers trying to figure out what to do. I remember hearing about that in the news. I know from my end, I saw a lot on the people trying to divert water. That was mostly the news coverage I think I saw at the time, but I didn't have any real idea actually as to how they actually got the kids uh, to safety. Um, I know there was actually like one point, I, I think Elon Musk like was loosely involved at one point because people were trying to get a lot of engineers to figure out the problem and mm -hmm. people had consulted him at some point but the movie didn't touch on that at all and i'm not even sure if that's true but it's what i heard um so really i think the heart and the heart and core of this movie about how they actually achieved this is through diving i mean that's really what the movie is is centralized around is diving because in order to get these kids even reach them they had to dive and that was one of the things I was surprised when watching the movie is that I actually thought before, like, the expert divers were even brought in, I thought the government actually reacted pretty quickly. Because mm -hmm. the parents, as depicted in the movie, like, it's like the night of the birthday party. They're like, hey, where are the kids? Like, are, they should be home by now. And they're like, okay, well, we think they went to this cave. Let's go search. They realized pretty soon that the flash flooding had occurred. All their bicycles were out there. And... Um, I think people were already there and they like they know they knew that there was a dangerous situation and that like the the Thai Navy SEALs were already being informed and like trying to go there so yeah but I, it was a different situation like yeah. it was not just diving regular diving and so I think it was that a, and, specific diving and I think that's what made well and they weren't prepared harder. for it I think they just knew they were like well we we can try because they did, they had no idea how far they went into the cave. If and it, how hard it would be to, de to dive in a cave. Yeah. I had no idea either. Yeah. and I, 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 To be honest, I never even thought about it. I didn't even think that that was something that someone would do. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that when the when the Thai Navy SEALs people, when they first go, they, they really don't get that far. And I think they're just like... Like they, they come back because they're like it, it's like impossible. They're like this is this is crazy. It's it's we can't see our hands in front of our face. We don't they don't have the right equipment. They don't have the right knowledge. So they know right away that they're gonna need more seasoned hands or at least people that know what they're doing. And then that's where uh, the two main divers of the story come in, uh, which I'm pulling up their names right now. It's a uh, 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 Richard Stan or Rick Stan, and then John v Valathan. I think I'm saying his name right. And so that's Viggo Mortensen and Colin Farrell, the actors that portray them. And then eventually Joel Edgerton comes in as Richard Harris. He's a doctor, but we'll we'll get to that point of the story once we get there. Um, but these two guys, it's it's super fascinating. Like they literally just do this as a hobby, but they've done it as a hobby for like thirty plus years. They've just always liked caves. They've always liked exploring. They've gotten better with it over time. They have participated in other rescues. Yeah, they they've participated in other rescues, and the reason why their names were even on a list to begin with is because they've had that prior involvement. They've offered their services as volunteers in those situations. And so they're kind of on a short list of people that, hey, who are really good divers yeah, in the world? Yeah, they're like the best. They're, yeah, like they're like, even in the documentary that we watched, they were saying how these two guys, like they're like pretty up there. They're like the top tier of the people that do this in the world. Um, and, and both of them, I mean, one, Rick, the Vigo Mortensen's character, he's a retired firefighter. The other one's an IT consultant. It's not like he does cave diving professionally for a living, but he is a professional at it because he's devoted so much time to this, to this hobby. Mm -hmm. And I like in the documentary, because uh, I guess we're kind of talking about both in this because it's hard not to, but the documentary, they're kind of just like, hey, this, this hobby that I've been doing for years is actually paying off. 
Yeah. Um, because really, I think without them, those boys wouldn't have had a chance. Yeah. I, I don't think so. And what I loved about seeing, you know, seeing them, like, when they show up, I mean, they ask very little questions. It's just like, oh, people are in trouble? Okay, yep, I'll be there. Like, yeah. there was very little, like, oh, I don't know if I should do it or anything like that. The they, government they just didn't did it. even want them to go. Yeah, but then... Uh, At but, the beginning, because it was so dangerous, but they were, like, pushing, like, we want to go. We want to go. We can yeah. do it. We can do it. Well, and even when they first show up to the cave, they're like, oh, no, like, you can't go in. And they're like, yeah. uh, no, like, time's ticking. Like, we were we here. Can. We're on the short list. Like, you, you need to let us in to do this. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think that's what, what uh, really built a lot of the tension around the story. And, and this is all real. So it's not like it's just like great script writing. But there is a lot of tension for sure in the first hour or so of the movie because you don't even know if like they if they're going to. Yeah, if they're, if they're alive or not. And neither did the divers. And just the psychology and the, and the nerve wracking experience that that would be like knowing that you're potentially going in to bring out bodies is... I mean, you can only imagine. It's it's hard to imagine and even comprehend. Yeah. I, I, I'm just in total awe of those people, honestly, yeah. that did it. Um, now, talking about the diving, uh, Isola, have you ever, you know, I mean, you swim. Done anything close to that? Nope. Haven't. Well, when we were in, when we were in Brazil, the, I went under that little... That cove with oh that one my like, gosh, little 14 year old like, kid, yes, right? <laughs> yes, it was like uh, five seconds. I think so. that's the closest I've come to like <laughs> cave diving. Yeah, we just like, there was a big rock. I forgot about that. There was a big yeah, rock. Like and a lot of moss around gosh, it. Gosh, you, you made me remember, and that was scary and dangerous. Like, can you imagine what they did? They, it's like they basically did that. But for, but like, like for days. Like, yeah, and hours. <laughs> anyway, what we did was just, like, a little cave. Like, not. it's, like, basically a stone that had a hole on it. And then we had to go through the hole Yeah. On in the ocean. So it was a little was bit tight. scary. It was tight, but was not really deep. Like, But, but it's scary because that rocks <clears throat> hurt you, you know, if you touch on them or something. Yeah. So I, well, I cannot imagine doing it, like... I know, I know for myself, like scuba diving is actually always something I've wanted to try. I, I would love to be able to try it and do it because I love, I love swimming. I like the ocean. I like being underwater, though I admit some of the fish kind of weird me out and I don't want them touching me, but I think nature's beautiful. So I would love to try it. But to this extent, um, you know, even some people in the movie and, and we watched a lot of real interviews with the guys, like people almost have a hard time understanding you do this for quote unquote fun. <laughs> like it's fun to it's go into so claustrophobic scary. environments where you can't see anything to have a good time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I also liked, uh, I liked that this ties to the documentary, but I don't talk about the movie. The documentary gave you a better sense of who the divers were as people and talked about just why they like to dive yeah. and that there's like a piece that they get from doing it, that it's just, you're totally removed from everything. Sometimes they attribute it to like being in space, uh, which that, that honestly seems under, understandable and it seems appealing. Um, and actually, I really like caves. I, I do. Uh, we have a cave system here in Iowa, uh, the Makokata Caves. And I, I've been there before, actually, with these Ola. And I don't, they're not nearly as massive or extensive as these caves. But mm -hmm. they're, they're beautiful. And it is fun to explore and, and kind of poke around in there. Yeah. But, but the, the cave diving side, what this movie opened my eyes up to was just... Not just, like, the technical precision of, like, knowing, like, how to have the water tanks on you and, like, knowing how to swim and, like, the cords and cables to make sure that you don't lose your way. But just, you have to have a really specific mindset. Like, you have oh, yeah. to have a ton of stamina. You have to be very, very calm under pressure. Uh, and then I just think that... That's Sorry. There's just so there's so many mental skills that you have to have to even get, get through something like that that ordinary people would just fail at. They repeated this sentence on the documentary and the movie a couple of times when they were like, "Panic, it's death in the cave." Oh yeah, panic so, is death in the cave. So they have to like be really calm and like control their emotions because if they panic, it's like die. Yeah, and I th I mean, I think that's true because you really do have to just 
kind of not focus on, I mean, you have to focus on where you're at, but I think you have to focus on your every movement more than anything else. It makes you extremely present, I would, yeah. I would feel like. Yeah. Now, have you ever been into a tight space before? Mm, I don't think so. Never? Oh, I have, I have, ah, uh, this is making me remember, I, I have been in a cave in Montana, I don't know, I don't remember the name of the cave, but like, I think that probably was the tightest place that I have been, like, there were spaces where we would have to sit and like, uh, uh, sleep down, I don't know how, just like, like, a, like slip or slide down, yeah, slide down on the rocks because like, you could not stand or something, mm -hmm. I think that was probably the closest ex closest experience that I got mm. if that floated I imagine that it would be really hard to get out I know uh, I, I don't think I've had much experience with a tight space though I do remember at the Makokita caves I, I took my little brother there once and we had found I don't even want to call it a cave system because it was just a very small separate cave area like outside of like one of the main caves mm -hmm. and we decided to poke around in there for fun and I remember that we were stupid I mean we had shorts and like t-shirts on no no equipment of any kind but we had our cell phones and we we're trying to use them as light and we we got we got a fair amount in there and then actually did start getting on like our hands and knees to like make it through certain spots but then eventually like we started realizing that we were actually getting kind of far in mm -hmm. and we we had a moment I had a moment of panic a little bit because I was like okay like we it's not like we couldn't keep going but I knew we weren't equipped mm -hmm. and I'm like I like I, I don't really like the idea of trying to go like this could get dangerous like I like my mm -hmm. you know instincts kicked in I guess and so then we we back backed out of that but that was nothing uh in comparison with what these guys did let alone in the water um, so you're just in complete awe of these guys, uh, but I also liked the, I liked Rick, the character Rick, uh, Viggo Mortensen plays him, uh, he's a very no, no bullshit person, kind of says oh, things yeah. like how it is, uh, and, and to some degree you could almost see that as being like dislikable, but he was definitely like the realist. Like, for sure. Because even like when he found the kids, I don't, he wasn't really that excited, no. you know, like he was just like, like. It yeah, later kinda... that they're alive, but he's like, um, okay, but but then but what, what do now? You do now? It's like, yeah. Um, and and the solution that they end up coming up with, uh, you know, we we can talk about that, but eventually they they figure out or guess that anesthetizing these kids is going to be the best way to. To get not, them out. Yeah. Am I not saying that, that right? Not the best way, but the only the, way. The only. Yeah. Way chains they could have because early uh was er that or just watch them die basically yeah because uh, early on in the movie and, I, and i'm not I, I shouldn't try to spoil too much even giving away the anesthetizing thing that's i guess a, a spoiler because it's not in the trailer but it's part of the true story i won't i really don't want to give away too many details so sorry if i've been a little spoiler heavy because this is a movie that's worth watching but um, what they, what the divers discover is that it's not just like a simple matter of, oh, find the kids and then, uh, you know, just help Bring them, them. help make them swim out and give them a scuba tank and they'll be fine. It's such a tight space to be able to even get through it at, with experienced people that if you were to take somebody that's, you know, never really swam that much or maybe doesn't know how to swim, they're going to get themselves like, hurt. They're going to the panic, uh, there's all these variables that could have gone wrong if they had just tried to take them as is. Even the Navy SEALs that are used to SEAL, they were not able to go where the kids were because yeah. it was just like so hard to get there. So how would the kids be able to, to get out? Like and they would probably just panic and die. And then that's when uh, uh, Rick, the, the main, uh, main main diver, Viggo Morrison's like, hey, like I, I know another dive volunteer he just also so happens to to be a doctor and and maybe we can talk to him and see what he thinks about this and, and anyways I, I don't want to give away too much of the details from there but 
that side of the story, I think, was the part that surprised me the most. Like, I, because I, I had no idea. I, I really did assume that maybe if they did find them, they would just scuba them out and just do it straightforward or something. I had no idea that they would do anything like that. The movie is so interesting because although you know that the, that everything went well, you, at, at least for me, was like, I'm watching and I'm like, I can't believe on what, on, on what I'm seeing. It's like, it's mm. unbelievable. And I knew the kids were alive, but I kind of, since it was a little bit ago, I kind of didn't remember exactly, like, did I survive? Did they not? Like, I was kind of like, mm. and then like when I, when they found them and like they told everybody that they were alive. Yeah, you, you cried. I, I not really just like cried a little bit. I really cried. It was so emotional, so so strong and like to see and what got me on that moment was because like the one of the first questions that they asked the kids when they were there was like like kind of like how the hell did you survive kind of thing and they were like oh we prayed and we meditated Mm -hmm. and that was like what mm, helped them through it and that was advice from the coach Mm -hmm. which i i had done a little research and i think he he either did it very lightly or he had had experience with it, but he had actually some experience with like being a monk or practicing monk things like meditation. Mm-hmm. Cause in, in Thailand, Buddhist is like the predominant religion over there. I, I think so if I'm mistaken, so, someone can correct me. But. It was just, it was just amazing to see like how much power those kids had inside them. And it just made me think how much power we have inside ourselves that we don't even know. It also makes because you, thankfully we are not put in, in this extreme situation, but it yeah. makes me think like, if we are, we have the same power to go through it, you know. Well, and the coach helps them realize, and the coach, just for the record, the coach is not very old. I mean, like he's he's twenty five years old. Yeah, I but mean, he doesn't look twenty five. So when when <laughs> when the kids went inside, I'm like Jordan was like talking about the coach, the, the coach, and I'm like. Where is the coach? I don't see the coach. Was the coach there? Really? And like, because all of them just look at so young. I couldn't tell which one was the coach. Because yeah. they, they all look so young. But I, I really think without that coach there, I mean, God knows, like, I, I'm sure eventually these kids will end up writing a book about this. Or I'd love to hear more, like, detailed accounts of... From what, their perspective. From their perspective, because... I mean, one, and I've seen some interviews since because, again, I kind of went down a rabbit hole and became obsessed with the subject after watching the movie and the documentary. Um, you know, one, you have you have to wonder, like, how the hell do you even know the passage of time? Because it's you're in a completely dark, secluded spot. But they answered this question. No, they, they answered the question in the interviews, not the, the movie. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just talking about the perspective because uh-huh. it's like, even if you got to watch that is showing you like the days that are going by i could only imagine that that'd feel like an eternity oh sure like, i mean it'd have to that's yeah. worse than any solitary confinement that a prisoner would have to the go through total days that they were there was 18 days it's unbelievable yeah and and, and I until think they found them i think was it was nine, nine, nine and it was days. like nine nine or ten days without food oh, i felt like even knowing that if they were alive was crazy well and it also makes me understand uh and i i've seen other movies about like extreme nature uh, circumstances i i knew the human body could survive a while without food like water is the key i mean you need water more than you actually need food Mm -hmm. but even i'm thinking like not eating for like a week and the kids (laughs) were like so skinny yeah. Before the cave, after the cave, there were nothing. And that's the long. thing too. Like, I mean, eventually they like they start getting some food, but even having the strength to make it that far, which I it's so it's so moving when they get there, and, and I'm glad that the the movie reflected real life. Uh, the guy, one of the main divers, John, the Colin Farrell character, he was just like, "You, you guys are so brave, like you're so strong," you know. Kept telling them to believe. Um, Really, really powerful stuff there, but I, I'm just thinking like I, I fasted for two days for like a colonoscopy before, it, but I'm thinking like that long. I'm a grown person. I'm not a kid. Yeah. I start probably looking at one of the other kids as a snack before too long because <laughs> uh, I don't think <laughs> I don't I shouldn't like joke about that, but it's 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 just crazy to me and it is inspiring. They were really a team working together. Yeah, and I actually wonder. 
I wonder if that actually helps them a little bit because, I mean, granted they're kids, but it's like they still have all played on a soccer team together. Lord knows that makes you feel bonded and connected as a team. I have to imagine, like, if they all, like, maybe it was just, like, a group of, like, stranger kids, like, there's, you know, all from different neighborhoods coming together, maybe they wouldn't have done so well. But I think because they had that bond earlier, it had to have helped. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm also then just thinking about the overall conditions of the cave. Like, how do you sleep? Like, when someone's got to go to the bathroom, like, you just, like, I guess, look oh, away. Oh, even, even talk about that, like, right. the, the divers felt they, sm- uh, like, have really strong smell. Oh, yeah. And they thought, well, it was the kids' bodies decomposing, but, like, since the kids were alive, you just assume that was, like, their feces and Probably. urine and stuff. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Um... Now the, now, the film itself, I mean, how did you feel it was depicting the events and every? I mean, like, just as a movie, what did you think, like? If it, like, showed it well, you mean? Yeah, no, I just mean as an, as an audience member watching the movie, I mean, were you entertained? Were you nervous? Were you like, oh, my God, like? Hey, I was entertained. I was nervous. I was, like, emotional. I was amazed by, it, like... In my opinion, the movie really was able to show like what happened. Made you feel like you were watching it in real time, in real like you know, in real life. Yeah. I think that's that's. I mean, I I'll just tell you this. This movie's great. Um, you can catch it on Amazon right now. It, it is an Amazon exclusive uh, at this point. But I th- this is one of those ones where I really wish people could see it in theaters. I did see that there were some select theater engagements for this movie, so if it's possible for you to, I would highly recommend watching this on a big screen, yeah. uh, just to again get that full immersion, because this is really a movie that you want to feel like you're in this world, I mean, for better or worse, because it is claustrophobic and, and very stressful at times, uh, but I think it matters. And I, I also like that the movie just really did give me that sense of claustrophobia, like I was yeah. like it would be hell going through like being even like an hour or two let alone days and i think that was from the diving perspective the thing that i really liked that the movie showed is that they would they would draw up little graphs of the cave periodically throughout the movie and then they would show it took them like seven eight hours to get to this point and then to this point yeah. and i just oh, think yeah, about the i just the well i just think about the exhaustion behind that these divers having mm-hmm. to do that so so carefully and precisely and and managed to do it day after day like mm-hmm. they probably didn't get a lot of food either no yeah there were some people also that went and stayed with the kids too so the, that the was seals really, like that was really brave from well them. yeah because eventually the thai seals they they do get to them more properly but they they realize that they use too much oxygen and mm-hmm. that they couldn't safely try to go back um the way they came and so they're like well we will leave like a couple of us to stay with them which i i can only imagine that must have helped tremendously yeah um yeah it's pretty pretty crazy uh but I, i'm really glad that this movie exists because uh I, I was telling Izola before we hit record that a lot of people i noticed when the trailer dropped they kept talking about well there's a documentary like there's a really good documentary and don't get me wrong the documentary was Did good but some people were saying, like, oh, well, you don't need a movie. You don't need a movie. And I would beg to differ and say that a movie is only going to help get this story more recognition and awareness and also would, I would say, promote um, coming together, uh, not just different countries, but culturally speaking. It promotes volunteerism, promotes yeah. humanitarianism, generosity towards others. There's so many good things that a movie like this is capable of reaching that I don't think a documentary is going to quite connect with because it's not it doesn't get as many eyes on it, uh, and it helps having actors that have some recognition behind this. I mean, Viggo Mortensen and Colin Farrell, Joel Edgerton, Ron Howard, these are all A list A list film stars. So I really like that they got some good good people, and, and I think good casting too because now that I've seen interviews with the real people and like the casting was pretty on point for everybody um but i i just yeah i can't i can't praise this movie enough uh if it ever does come out on on 4k or blu-ray i'll i'll likely end up buying it it's 
not something I would necessarily want to watch 24 seven or, or come back to a lot. But if I was in the right mood and wanted something uplifting and reminding me about the good in people, this would be a it's movie I'd true. go to. It's really, it's, it's interesting because this movie you know, shows that to solve big problems, we need other people. We need people to get together, like to just don't look to their differences because we're like people from different countries, different languages, different cultures, but they were like totally focused on saving the boys. That was the goal, didn't matter anything else. But so it kind of just makes me think that we need like other people, but at the end, again, we need ourselves and we need the power that's inside us because with all those people that were helping, they said that it was like 5,000 people from their country, then a couple hundreds from other countries. But if they had all of that, but those kids were not strong enough, they had not, if they didn't have a strong faith, if they didn't have like the willing power to make it through, nothing else would have mattered. So it's like, it's really important to come to with people from outside, but it's like us. Like, I just like to... to like your inner strength. Idea. Yeah, the idea that's like, we have the power inside ourselves. And that's like the first step. Do you think that first step, like you said, stems from having a belief in a higher power? Like, that's where your inner strength comes from as a human? Like, it starts with your, your spiritual foundation? I think for them it was, because they seem to be really religious. And for them, I think it was. For everybody else, it can be different. For me, it is. But yeah. I think for everybody else, it can be different. Like, well, but. it's. I, I just asked the, the, those questions because I think humanity has shown over its existence that there's a lot of things that we're capable of being resilient against mm -hmm. not just life or death situations like this but a lot of other things that happen mm -hmm. and i don't know i i think a lot of people they they get strength from other places some some feel strength and purpose from their family and their friends mm -hmm. others have a, a devotion deep faith that they cling to that gives them hope um, others maybe have aspirations for providing a better future for their, their, their kids, yeah. uh, or maybe about like making a difference in the world. So I, I'm always curious, like what does give people hope? Like where do people find the inner strength if it's not coming from, you know, one of those different things, like where does it really come from? Yeah. I, I don't really know. I feel like you, what you said, it can be any of those reasons you don't really know, but I just hope that people can find that and I think the movie it's a good way to remember that just to like hey you can do it yeah I I think one of my favorite aspects of the movie is again going back to the volunteerism uh, I I'm not gonna say I'm like the biggest volunteer but I've done it more than maybe some other people have I I do like to volunteer mm -hmm. I suspect if I you know, get older and get more time, I would probably devote more time to it because I do think it helps. And in those, cir and in those circumstances, you can certainly come together with people for a, uh, a common good and, uh, you know, re really make a difference and, and not care about, you know, anything else. You're just there for the right reasons. And, and certainly this movie is a case of what happens when enough people can come together. Um, now, on the subject of volunteerism, though, the the volunteerism in this is certainly different because of the risk factor. And I think that's very, very fascinating to talk about because I talked about one of the divers in particular. He has a son. He has a family. Yeah. God only knows what they're, like, thinking when they're like, hey, uh, I got to go now. I'm going to go try to risk my life to go save these kids. Like, what goes through your head when you think about that? Yeah, it's just like... Well, I'm asking you. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to think because it's unbelievable. And, like, it also makes you think about their family, how their family were also heroes because they loved them and they let them go to risk their lives to save other people's lives. And I, I don't know how, how... I don't know how they would just be brave enough to 
let their families back and just... Well, what I seem to notice, at least through this movie and other instances of this, is that when it involves human life, I do think there's like this instinctual instinct that just kicks in where people ordinarily would like maybe have more reservations and be like, oh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do this. But when you know someone's life is at in jeopardy, I do think people kind of are able to just so fully so, solely focus on the life in front of them and, yeah. and not think about anything else. And I think maybe for them was even more because they knew it's like or they would do it or nobody would do it. Yeah. Because it's like nobody nobody else not nobody else but like really few people in their world had the skills that they have. Yeah. And I, I do think that humanity also shows over time that you know, when the, when these times when people come together, it usually is because of life or death. And I think sometimes, because I, I watch movies like this, and I've seen other movies like this, and I can certainly wonder, well, how come more people don't do that? How come more people don't, like, put aside their differences and things like that? And I think, because in those circumstances that are so heightened, the goal the is more simple. Yeah. And, and, well, there's the adrenaline, but just the, the, the end it's... goal is more simple. Whereas other big world problems that we need cooperation and togetherness on, yeah. people find more complicated uh, issues to, to make oh, things think... not so simple to solve. It's because, it's because they didn't have, like, for example, if it was in another situation, they probably wouldn't choose the way that they chose to to take the kids out but it's like you have no choice so you have to act yeah. so the pressure of time and like either you do that or they're dead I think it made them do it what, what uh, another thing that just going back to the hobby thing that like they said those people all of them were not their it was not their job was their hobby mm-hmm. and it just amazes me cause like f- probably for their whole life People were giving them bullshit for, like, spending that much time, that much money. I was going to say, it does not look like a cheap hobby. Yeah, it's like that much time, that much money, risking their lives for that hobby. You know, usually people judge other people's hobby. And, uh, of course, because, like, it's not important for them, so they just judge. And then I'm like, gosh, they, for their whole life, they spent so much time and love and, like, doing this stuff but i don't think they never thought that their hobby would become like the instrument that they would use to make a miracle become true so it just also brings me thinking like i thought about jordan because like movie things related to movie this podcast and like all everything that he does related to movie is kind of his job hobby his patient like something that he really loves and he really cares and a lot of people don't understand why he spends so much time and money and everything doing these things but it just made me remember too it's like sometimes we do things that we don't know why but it comes from our heart and I think that because it comes from our heart it has a reason to be there and like at some point in life you will it will make sense so Keep doing what you know, what your heart tells you to, and just follow your dreams and follow what you want to to do in your life. Because I don't know, sometimes we don't understand, but it will maybe be saving other people's life. Maybe not literally, but somehow. My podcast ain't gonna save lives. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe somebody that's having a, a bad day or they're in the dumps might might hear this and, you know, get a little entertainment value out of it or, or get something. <clears throat> I, I really shouldn't joke like that because it's like I'm like I'm kicking myself short. <clears throat> that's what Excuse me. he always does, but... I, I'm very, I have that very, like, Chandler-like sensibility from Friends, very Matthew Perry-like, where it's like I, I do a lot of self-deprecating jokes to mask my insecurities. Uh, no, I first, thank you for saying everything that you said uh, about the, the podcast thing in particular, because that does mean a lot to me. Uh, I, can answer, I can answer her question a little bit about like why I do it. I won't go on a soapbox, because I actually, actually, by the time this episode airs, I think the, the, the one-year anniversary uh, special for the podcast will have aired, so go back and listen to that, because that'll have already happened. But 
uh, to give a little bit of a soapbox, you know, the reason I, I love movies and the reasons I like talking about them is because it it brings people together. I think it also opens your mind to new and interesting possibilities. It's educational. It's it's entertaining. It's it's thought provoking. It's beautiful. It's it's uh, thought provoking as well. It can challenge your ways of thinking. Uh, and I'm also just in awe of the technical and and artistry behind it all. And so I'm very passionate about putting that out there. And I do think that whether it's you are really passionate about a podcast or or fitness or or I don't know woodworking any type of hobby that you might have if if people just want to call it a hobby I I don't know if I I don't sometimes I don't always like the word hobby because it 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 makes it just sound like oh it's just something that you're always going to do for 20 minutes here and Mm -hmm. there and that's all it stays at it's it's sort of limiting the word Mm -hmm. is I think of them as passions and I think passions can take you to unexpected places and can make a difference for a lot of people and I think for myself, uh, doing this podcast, it's like, I just think if I'm myself and I put out something truly authentic from myself that, you know, is, is really coming from me and I put a lot of hard work into it and just, again, put it out there as is, I, I just think, call me, you know, uh, high hoped or naive or something like that but I just think that kind of good that that type of authentic uh, self that you put out there in the world it's bound to to produce something back that's going to mean something to people and when I say save lives I said save lives because we are talking about the 13 lives but well, yeah if, but <laughs> if it just saves your life you know if, if it just makes you feel better personal if happiness you, if you if just that's more than enough because that's our first in my opinion that's the first goal we have to have it's just to to survive, you know, and then we can save the others. Yeah, I, I'm a big proponent of self-respect. I, I think if, you know, or, or, or love, self-love, whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it. It's like if you don't respect yourself, if you don't love yourself, how can you possibly put that out to somebody else that yeah. needs it? I mean, you got to start with yourself first. And, and yeah, even if I think a person's hobby doesn't amount to eventually doing a life-saving, changing rescue for people or something that gets a lot of eyes and ears on it, I don't think you should be doing it for that. And I, and I clearly don't think these guys did it for that. No. Like, I, I think they clearly, they've done it because they have a love of the exploration, the nature, the challenge of it. Um, I of them, th- uh, uh, on, the, on the documentary, a lot of them said that they were, like, shy kind of like quiet so that was like although it's kind of weird but although it's like so dangerous to be down there in the in the caves they said that that was their safe place yeah i mean because they, they are no one's telling them what to do um mm-hmm. they're, they're able to just totally be free mm-hmm. and i do think that that's an appealing thing for a lot of people uh whether it's cave diving or not is doing something that makes you feel free yeah. i admit i like doing this podcast because i run it like i you know i'm doing this i'm not no one's telling me how to do this i'm i'm figuring it out if i mess up i own it if i succeed with something i'm proud of it mm-hmm. but it's mine yeah. You know, and, and, and I think we should all be so lucky to be able to find something that we really feel that sense of freedom behind. It's true. Um, do you have something that you feel that way about? Mm. You love to work out. Yes, I don't know if it's my hobby, though. I think it is. It might be. She, My wife always says, so she's, all, she's always saying that she's like, I don't think I have hobbies. I don't think I have hobbies. I don't think that's true. It's she, because she I does. like a lot of stuff, but I don't really love, love. But I really like working out. I think you love it. I might love it. <laughs> I was going to say, I, come on. I think you can say love for that. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. It, it kind of, I could, I could like feel when they were saying that it's the place where they feel safe, that they feel, I don't know, connected to themselves. I feel like that's where I, that's how I feel when I'm working out. I just feel like connected to myself again and just like feeling that I'm doing something good for myself and like it just it's just a good feeling and I I like to do it um one one subject I want to jump to quick is the subject of of, uh, heroism or heroes uh because it's 
clear that not just the main divers uh, that are depicted by Colin Farrow and Viggo Mortensen and, and Joel Edgerton, like all those guys, they're clearly heroes. Yeah. Uh, I I would uh, struggle to comprehend those guys walking into a bar and not having someone buy them a drink because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like it's uh, it's crazy. I mean, those those guys to me. I mean, I I know news gets news travels fast and also gets forgotten just as fast. Oh, but I really hope people don't. Hard forget time. what these guys did. I mean, and I know, I think each of them have actually written books about this, which they rightfully should. Um, but but on the subject of heroes, I'm curious for yourself, Isola, are there people that you sort of look to as a hero or someone that you think of as heroic? In my life? or Yeah, just life. It doesn't have to be in your life, just someone out in the world that you're like, I think they're a hero in some respect. Hmm... I can't think of anybody. No? There are a lot of people that I admire their work, but not like, oh, you are a hero. I think heroism, I mean, I'm not, I don't know if I have like a specific answer for the question myself. I, I mean, I, I know some police officers. I think they're heroes. Uh, th- yeah. That's a more obvious form of heroism because they're putting their lives at risk, doing physical danger uh, and whatnot. But I think heroism takes many shapes. Yeah. I think you can be a hero to somebody without knowing it. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot I could say about that, but what do you think is the, I I guess if you have some final thoughts or the message behind this movie or, you know, any final things that you were to say about it, what would you say? Oh, I think that's just like, I remember that like, you can do a lot when you have, you know, people getting together, but you also can do a lot on your own. And you can do even more if you can have both of those things together. So if we do our job ourselves and we, if we have a community that get together with a goal, like we can do things that are unbelievable. Because again, like I watched the movie, I knew the guys were survive, would go, were going to survive. I saw the end of the movie and I am still like, I can't believe. <laughs> it's just like a really miracle, a real miracle. And the serenity of the guys amazed me. It's just like, gosh, for so much little, for example, like we watched the movie last night and this morning uh, I got stressed because of stupid things, because Pandera didn't have my bagel <laughs> because my coffee machine wasn't working. And I got, poor you. Yeah, poor me. And I got <laughs> so stressed, like, you know, like, so. And then I'm like, gosh, that's so stupid. Like, I am losing my mind over mind over something so little. And those boys were, like, were so calm and serene and in peace with, like, that situation. So... I have to keep reminding myself of that. And uh, if you have the opportunity, just watch the movie because I really think that has a good message to to show you. There's a lot of positive messages from this movie and none of it comes across as being forced or in your face or cheesy. No. Like it's all it's I all even, very I authentic. even love it that the guy that you said he was a little bit sour. He was one of the dives, the one that says the truth. Like, yeah, the, he uh, is really sour. Like, sometimes he would just be uh-huh. like telling the truth to your face, and the truth many times is not it hurts. pleasant. Yeah. Yes, but it's just it's just like even him. Like, he was needed. He was one of the ones that were like, you know what? You do it or they die. That simple. And sometimes we need that. It's like, yeah. so it just make me also appreciate. A man of action. Yeah, it just made me appreciate too. Like, because sometimes we have uh, that friend or that sibling or that like parent that just is like that. And they're like, oh my gosh. It's like, why are you like that? But mm-hmm. we need people like that just as we need the other one that was a little bit more soft. Just like we need the other mm-hmm. one that was a little bit mi- more like a scientist kind of thing. So yeah. we need these... These different these minds. Diff- yeah, to make things work. I, I really... I'm glad, actually, that you pointed out uh, Vigo Mortensen's character, Rick. That's the one that's very direct. But it is refreshing to see somebody like that. I mean, yeah. especially, like, in a time crunch situation because you don't want people dilly-dallying and, and wasting time too much. But 
it makes me think, even in situations where, you know, there's not a time clock where no one's going to die, it does drive me insane sometimes when you're working on something and you know, like, there's a solution or you know this could be done, but a lot of people that come together, they try to put too much thought into certain stuff and then they don't, and and they don't want to act and then it just makes it worse and it prolongs things. And then it eventually can sometimes spiral into something that it wasn't even supposed to be in the first place. And yes, that's where it's like, I I love when someone has that kind of uh, drive and, and I'd say willpower to be able to get other people to just realize, okay, you're, you're just trying to create more, confusion and chaos stop yeah like this isn't that this isn't that complicated do this or do that that's the choice yeah um i wish things could sometimes be that simple it's not always the case but i i really did like seeing that um i also again i like seeing the the countries and different people come together i think seven or eight different countries uh had people come together for this cause uh, I hope it would maybe open the door to people finding other ways to come together without there having to be a life or death crisis. I, I might, again, sound optimistic, but I actually think there's a lot of things that could be worked on and solved that maybe people aren't dying over necessarily, but we could find a way if we just focus on, on the end result and not so much on you know, who gets to say what, who's making the decisions, who's more important than the other person. It's like, put your ego aside. Like, let's, let's just get things done for, for our community. And I like that too, actually, the community side. Uh, I'm big on community. I I think people need to watch out for each other. If you have a neighbor, be a good neighbor, (laughs) you know, treat people like how you want to be treated. I mean, these to me should be some common sense type things, but they're not always the case. And, and I think, as we get so much uh, uh, different news stories fed into us through social media and we get so busy all the time, we lose sight of all that. But it's like, don't lose sight of what's really important going back to your Panera thing and, and not having the right bagel. It's like, we have each other. Like We, we have people that care about us and we care about people and, and we have people that love us and, and we have a roof over our heads and and, and we these have different, so many things to be yeah, thankful. Yeah, we, we have all these things to be thankful for. So, I don't know, it's like while you're here, you know, life is short. So make the most of it and, and, and you know, hopefully better yourself and your family. And also find time uh, find the time to help somebody, too. Even if it's just something small. Even if it's just like being part of a podcast to help them, to make them happy. <laughs> is this why you're doing this it's just to make me happy no i kind of like talking about this movie actually it's a good movie yeah it's it's a really good movie I, I i highly recommend it i'm trying to think of anything that i found like out of place or rush but after all the deep dive i did i i really think ron howard and his team did a very good job of representing the other countries there was no like whitewashing in the casting mm-hmm. like there was plenty of of thai people and also thai film production behind the camera that yes. helped make the movie. Uh, so even the movie itself is a collaborative effort that is is showing uh, positivity in the human spirit. So I, I love seeing stories like that, and I hope this one doesn't get forgotten anytime soon because it truly is a, a set of miracles that I can't believe happened. Even after watching the movie, I'm like, I, I still can't believe. <laughs> I think it's like I'm meeting the kids one day if I ever meet them. Oh my and God, I will can be you like, imagine? I wish. I and feel then, like they're celebrities too. Like yeah, but they then, have to. But be. then I think I will meet them. I'm like, I can't believe you're alive. <laughs> God. And, and it, what I would, I'm, I'm sure someone's gonna do this. Someone's gonna look back on this and be like, here's like, it's been 20 years since the cave. Here's where these, these yes, people are I at just, now. I just really hope and believe that they have a bright future. I really believe because, gosh, like. I believe in God, and I believe that he probably has something really special for those kids. Otherwise, they would be dead. Yeah. So. A lot of them, I think, we, we watched a, an interview, a couple of interviews that they had done after the incident. They all said that they wanted to be soccer players, I think, yes. and provide for their families, professional soccer players. Yes. I mean, that's cute. And, I'm, I, and you know, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, this will be my last thought on this. I never want to be like one of those people where if I see a kid and they're like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And they say, I want to be an astronaut. And I'm like, oh, isn't that sweet? Isn't that <laughs> sweet? Little Billy wants to go on a rocket in the space. 
I mean, I know, like, that's, like, the instinct when it's a kid because it's cute when they're saying that they want to do that. But I'm also mindful of of encouragement of, yeah. of youth. And it's, like, if someone really wants to be that, they very well could be it. Yeah. Now, eventually, they could find out that they don't lack the math and critical thinking to be able to pull off being an astronaut. But that's yeah. another subject. But I don't want to dissuade them from that. Yeah. So I say if that's what you want to be, phenomenal. Go for it. Yeah. Seriously, it's, it's better than just being like, well, I don't really know. I don't really know. Yeah. I don't know. So, okay. Uh, I think that's all I got to say on, on 13 Lives. But, uh, Isola, thank you for coming on. Thank you for of supporting course. the podcast. Thank you, people, for listening. And I hope you, if you didn't watch it yet, you go there and watch it and comment with us. Comment on the Instagram page. Just give us our opinion and your feedback. And just... Hope to see you again here. Yes. If I am invited. <laughs> well, I mean, I, you, you live with me, so by, by default, you're always back. welcome. You're always welcome. Okay. I think I'll, I think I'll save you for like when we talk about true stories. If that's kind of what you what your little uh, <laughs> what what am I trying to say? If that's what your track is, I kind of like, like that because that makes you have to find really good real Easter eggs movies for oh, me. Oh, I got to watch. I got tons. Don't even get me started. I got tons oh, of movies on, on true God. events. Yeah, okay. true story movies. I got a lot. Let's I got a lot it. of good recommendations. Let's do it. Okay. In we fact, might have a special just for, for me. In fact, I talked about how Ron Howard directed this movie. He and he, he does a, a lot, lot of true of, stories. Yeah, so good ones. I I was telling Jordan he's my kind of guy. Then let's go for it. Have you seen any other movies from him? I mean, I know you don't know directors or actors' names to save your life, Jordan, but. but yeah, I don't think I have. Mm, I think the next one that we could watch by him would be A Beautiful Mind. That's uh, to me a classic I from now. I watched it. I don't know. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, she's giving me the I've had enough. Like, like, stop, stop. Yeah, because we are now going to another subject. Let's, let's, yeah, we will be back, people. All right. Thanks, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, we'll catch you all in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.